All right, picking up where we left off, we're going to sketch the graph of f of x equals x minus 1 quantity squared times x plus 2. I'm going to go ahead and keep a running tally of what's going on up here. So first off, we notice we have x-intercepts at x equals 1 and negative 2. All right, so we have at 1 and negative 2, we have our x-intercepts. Right. We also have a y-intercept, y-intercept at the point 0, 3. I believe that's right. Plug in a 0 there, that's negative 1 squared, so that's 1. 1 times hmm, 2, 0, 2. Okay, we have our x and our y intercept. Now, if you notice, this actually is a polynomial. It's a cubic. So I could probably make a guess on the end behavior. Um, but because it is an x cubed, okay, the limit as x approaches infinity is going to be positive infinity and then negative infinity going to, um, to negative infinity. Okay, as x approaches positive infinity, it's going to go to positive infinity. It's going to do something like this. And as x approaches negative infinity, it's going to go to negative infinity. Now, what happens in between, I don't know. So, I'm not going to hazard any guesses there. Let's go ahead and look at f prime of x. All right, well, this is going, if I treat this like the product rule, it might be easier to multiply this out, actually. Um, this would be x squared minus 2x plus 1 times x plus 2. So f of x, so help us out with our next derivative actually. Okay, x cubed. Okay, we're going to have a 2x squared. Okay, minus 2x squared minus 4x plus x plus 2. Combining terms, we have x cubed minus 3x plus 2, so that f prime of x is 3x squared minus 3, and that is equal to 0 whenever x equals plus or minus 1. Let's go ahead and draw a sine diagram for that negative 1, positive 1. So if we plug in a value of 0, that's going to be negative 3, so it's decreasing in there. We know it's 0 in here. Okay, if we plug in a value of 2 into our derivative, that's certainly going to be bigger than 3, so it is increasing over there. And a value less than negative 1, so negative 2, that will still be positive. Okay, so it appears that it is increasing from negative infinity to negative 1, decreases between negative 1 and 1, and then it is increasing after 1. Okay, we know that. Now, our second derivative, let's go ahead and look at our second derivative. Our second derivative is 6x. So we have inflection point changes, or an inflection point change at x equals 0. So at 0 we have possible concavity change. If we test it at positive 1, it is concave up. And testing it at negative 1, it is concave down. Okay, so let's go back to our graph and see what we can add on to this. It's decreasing past negative 1. Okay, um, we could actually find, we could find the local maximum. I don't think we need to do that to get a good sketch here, but it's concave down after 0. And it's also increasing, so it appears to be doing something like this, and then we know it's going to go to positive infinity. Alright, now at negative 1 it changes from increasing to decreasing. So it's going to increase, okay, but it's got to be concave down. So we've got something that's going to have to look like that. At 1 it will change. 
we know it goes to negative infinity. Let's change that to make that a little more smooth because it is a polynomial after all. So there's a good sketch of what this graph looks like based on our derivative tests, our derivative tests along with our intercepts. All right, number 12, sketch the graph of x squared over 1 minus x squared. All right, well, its x-intercept is going to be whenever x is 0, and that is at a point 0, 0. Our y-intercept is going to have to be the same, so it has a shared x and y-intercept. See, we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals negative 1 based on the two x squared powers. So as it goes in both directions, it's approaching negative 1. Now we also have a vertical asymptote at x equals plus or minus 1. So a preliminary look at this, we have x equals positive and negative 1. We're going to have asymptotes here. We know we have a value at 0 and a horizontal asymptote at negative 1. Let's go ahead and something like this. All right, now our first derivative, I'm going to skip a little bit of the algebra here, although you should not. The first derivative, by our quotient rule, ends up being 2x over 1 minus x squared squared. And we have on our sine diagram, our critical points are at 0, that's where it is 0, at 1, where it is a vertical, and negative 1, we have another vertical tangent there, okay, or a non-existent tangent. Okay, now testing those values gets us increasing over on this side it is increasing on this side of 1. It is decreasing in here and increasing here. Okay. Now, based on our vertical asymptote, we know this one right here is going to approach infinity at those two points. Now, now that's about all we can say, I think, at this point. Let's go ahead and look at the second derivative. All right, now, again, I'm going to skip the algebra on you. Okay, but it is 6x squared plus 2 over 1 minus x squared cubed. All right, so it appears at x equals negative, let's see, Well, let's see. At negative 1, we have potential concavity change. Positive 1, we have something happening there. All right, so testing the concavity, it's concave down to the left of negative 1, concave up between the two, and concave down past that. Well, we have the concave up in the middle. Now, to be concave up, it's going to have to turn down. Now, because we know what it approaches, I think we can safely, safely sketch the rest. We're going to have something that looks like that. And there is our function. Next we have x squared over x squared, or x squared over x minus 1. Okay, now this one one, let's first notice that our domain is that x is not equal to 1, All right, because we're going to have a vertical asymptote at that point. Our x and our y-intercept is at 0, 0 for this one. Looking at our end behavior, okay, plus or minus infinity of f of x, oh, actually they're not the same f of x, the limit as x approaches negative infinity, 
is negative infinity. Positive infinity, we're approaching positive infinity. Now, our numerator is one degree bigger than our denominator, so we might actually have a slant asymptote. Let's go ahead and divide this. X squared divided by x minus 1, x minus x. Okay, so that will be x plus 1, x minus 1. All right, so we have a remainder of 1. So it is a slant asymptote of x plus 1. Okay, so we have a slant asymptote there. We've also got a vertical asymptote at x equals 1. Okay, let's see x plus 1 there. Positive 1 there. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the first derivative. I think that'll be good enough actually on this one. All right, if we use our quotient rule, we have low d high minus high d low over low low. So that is 2x squared minus 1x squared. So we have x squared minus 2x or x minus 1 squared. So our critical points here, it's undefined at 1. Uh, let's see, factoring that. We have at 0 and at 2. 0 and at 2, it is 0. Testing those intervals, it is increasing past 2 decreasing between 1 and 2. Between 0 and 1 it is decreasing and before 0 it is increasing. Now we know it's going to approach these different asymptotes we have drawn in here and we know we had this point 0, 0. We know it's decreasing after that and it's going to have to approach that asymptote and it is increasing coming from the left okay and then to the right of one it is decreasing coming from that and increasing off of that so we have a hyperbola as it appears to be what we have all right our last sketch the graph of x minus one to the two-thirds power now, it will be handy to go ahead and write this at some point as x minus 1, and that is the squared cube root. So actually, this function is always positive. The inside is always positive, and then the cube root is going to be always positive. So our range, we don't usually write this, but our range is y is greater than or equal to 0. Let's go ahead and find the x-intercept and y-intercept. The x-intercept is when this is going to be x equals 1, so 1, 0. The y-intercept is at 1, no, 0, 0, no, it's 1, okay, 0, 1 is where our y-intercept is. So we've got this point 0, 1, our y-intercept. We have 1, 0, our x-intercept, and it's always greater than 0. Now you can take the limit on this and show because the function is always positive, the limit is going to plus and minus, or at the limit at plus or minus infinity is positive infinity. Okay. So now let's go ahead and look at our first derivative. 2 thirds x minus 1 to the negative 1 third. Okay, now that is never going to be 0, but it is going to be undefined at x equals 1. It's undefined there. Now if we evaluate it to the left, it is, incre it is decreasing. To the right, it is increasing. 
And so we have a local minimum there, actually at one zero. All right, so the function is increasing in both directions. That really doesn't help too much. So let's go ahead and look at the second derivative. The second derivative is negative 2 ninths x minus 1 to the negative 4 thirds. And again, our only critical point is 1. And because of that negative 2 ninths, the rest of it being positive, this is always going to be concave down. So both of these is concave down, which tells us our graph is going to have to look something like that. We have a cusp there, a vertical tangent at 1, which we kind of should have seen coming as we went. Well, we did actually with our first derivative test. We had a vertical tangent at 1. So, all right, well, there's our sketch of that function. That is the end of this section on limits at infinity, ending with now that we have all this information, we can sketch graphs.